Good morning, sir.
हेलो सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर या गुड मॉर्निंग यू आर एबल टू सी मी यस सर ओके सर विद इन फाइव मिनट वी विल स्टार्ट मीटिंग सर आई हैव टू लॉग इन अगेन नो नीड सर ओके आई विल कीप लॉग इन यस सर सो वॉइस इज क्लियर यस सर इट्स क्लियर सर एंड हाउ मेनी आर जॉइनिंग टिल नाउ थर्टी वन पीपल ऑलरेडी ज्वाइन इट सर by to uh, within 2 3 uh, 3 up to 5 minutes ha ah. we will join sir ha ah, sir okay okay thank you sir okay so i'll keep joining ha huh? yes sir thank keep you sir keep it on yes sir keep yes, it sir. on okay
Okay. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Good morning. Sir. Uh, good morning. Uh, yes, sir. Everyone is able to hear? Yes, sir. Okay. So, friends, good morning. Good morning good to morning, all of sir. you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I good morning. welcome all of you to this good morning, orientation sir. session. Good morning. Dr. Lakshmaya's IS Study Circle welcomes all of you to this orientation program. I'm very happy to be with all of you, though virtually. And uh, this is uh, a very, very important step you have taken in your life that you are preparing for civils. And uh, I don't have to emphasize the importance of civil services in India, as you all by now may be very familiar with the importance of higher civil service, that is IAS, IPS, IFS, and other central services uh, in which you will be going uh, when you pass the UPSC exams. This service is very challenging and gives a lot of opportunity to you to serve this country in the best possible manner. And the exam, if I come to the exam part, uh, it is conducted by UPSC, as you know, every year. And I can say with my experience of about 40 years, that this is the most fair examination in the country where only your talent, that will fetch you the result. Because see, after passing this IS exam, I came into service and then served the government for 35 years. I have seen so many other examinations being conducted by government, various government, state government, central government, for various posts. I'm not saying for only state civil service or other exams, and many exams. And you also might have experienced, there are so many issues and people have to go to court, even court, uh, to redress their grievances. This kind of situation has never come in UPSC examination. So the gist of what I'm saying is, if you are preparing with your whole heart, and if your approach is right, if you are dedicating fully yourself for this examination, then nobody can come in your way to get success in IES examinations. That is what I'm trying to say. Here, nothing else will work except your talent, your hard work, your sincerity, your dedication. And I will say, always I say that never think that you can't do. Never think. Because those who are able to do about 1,000 people every year passing uh, for IES and other uh, allied services, 
central services they are like us they are not very different their situation their other condition economic social they are more or less like ours maybe plus minus this way that way few percent not more than that so if we determine to do it we will definitely do it nothing can prevent because the examination is so fair that nothing wrong will go that uh, side so i request you never feel that you can't do and dedicate yourself fully with whole heart if you are preparing you will definitely succeed now coming to the guidance part what happens in such a big examination uh, I, i should also tell you this is one of the 10 toughest examination one of the 10 toughest examination in the world there was some news item about 8 <clears throat> to 10 months back where all kind of examination conducted by different universities and governments they were ranked <clears throat> so i <clears throat> sorry is examination civil service i should say is one of those 10 toughest examinations so you have to really have a proper strategy so much is the course so much is the complexities that the time available will not be enough even if you are trying for 2 to 3 years even then time available will not be sufficient it's like a ocean so if you don't have proper guidance on the strategy what is strategy to be followed and what are the relevant reading material then what will happen in your anxiety you will be buying this book that book this magazine that magazine this journal that journal and there lot of competitive examination books in the market you will buy everything in your anxiety keep compiling and piling on your table it takes lot of time and then as i said time available is never sufficient so better planning is needed better guidance is needed and what are relevant material which you should keep on your table and what you should throw away not needed so you reduce your tension because when your work is more and time is less you become tense you become tense you lose your confidence and there are people who lose their health also because of the worry so all these things happens when the exam is approaching fast the nearer the exam the more is the anxiety the more is the tension and then many of i have seen my friends falling sick before examination so all your effort which you have made for one year two years goes west when you are not even able to appear in the examination so such situation is totally avoidable totally avoidable 100% it can be avoided you don't have to be tense any time you should enjoy learning enjoy preparation with full confidence you will definitely be able to do and this will be possible if you have somebody to hold your hand somebody to support you properly somebody to guide you that yes these are the material these you read properly and these are the thing you should not bother so those kind of guidance i have seen dr lakshmiya's is study circle last 10 years i am associated in one or other way to this uh, academy this uh, institution and uh, they have rich experience of about a decade in this line which can be very useful to you and there is a group of good faculty member very experienced people they know what to do when to do what to do and how to do they are expert in that and they will be guiding you and this is how a, a kind of you prepare in a tension free atmosphere 
with a full confidence that you will definitely be able to succeed. So they have the elaborate planning. Now I am, you are aware that it is in three stages, civil services, prelims, then main, and then there is a, a what is called as personality test. All three stages, the different strategies are needed. So now the prelims are coming in, uh, coming June. Time is not that much, so time is very short. And if you start now with proper guidance, I think uh, uh, nothing com can come in your way. So this is the time and you have chosen a best uh, institution for your guidance. And uh, I'm sure uh, that the senior faculty, the experienced people uh, of this uh, organization will definitely be very, very helpful to all of you. And uh, with their uh, guidance, mature guidance and their guidance on the relevant material and strategy and clearing all your doubts. If you have any doubt, you can speak to any one of them. And there are sessions where doubts are cleared. So in this kind of approach, uh, it will be very, very useful uh, for coming few months and you will definitely be scoring very high in the prelims uh, of the June 2022. So with this kind of uh, uh, my opinion and uh, uh, experience, I would like to tell you that you are in a very good place and uh, I wish you all the best for your bright career in the coming years. Now with this, I stop here and my colleague uh, Sai Gautam will now take over. Thank you all, all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Please wait for two minutes, students. So shall I start, sir? Uh, good morning. Good morning, Gautam, sir. Shall I start? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. Good morning, students. Uh, good morning. Good morning, sir. Basically, good morning. This Morning, sir. Good morning, good morning. Yes. Basically, this particular session. Good morning. There are three basic purposes of conducting this particular session. The first very important thing is prelims as an exam has become a big blockhead. Because now in this particular field, being in the past six years, I've come across a number of friends who have said they have not cleared prelims for four attempts, three attempts, two attempts, or even five attempts, right? Till their last attempt, there were some friends who have not cleared their prelims. Just looking at their stories, it appeared that was prelims so tough. This is first thing which we have to see. The second agenda behind this particular course being launched is <clears throat> 
why not increase the proportion of telugu speaking students writing mains examination this is one the other one is why not increase the proportion who are writing the mains of the people whom we know this is the second agenda the third agenda is is prelims really tough right now we are going to debunk all these three particular questions across this particular session i think it would run around for one and a half hour okay we would see that what are the important things that are to be followed when you are pre preparing for your prelims examination right now before i get into this important thing and before i get into a particular set strategy you need to know what are my credentials so that you can believe right now i have cleared prelims all six times right this was my sixth attempt i had given my mains examination this year one year i had got 150 plus in the prelims examination to be very precise that was 158 then three consecutive years i had scored 130 plus right from 2020 and 2021 i had scored 110 plus okay these are my credentials right now looking at these marks i think i have opened the key to cracking prelims right now trust me when you look at something called as randomness curve of prelims examination right there is something called as randomness curve okay now what do you mean by this randomness curve is basically the percentage of randomness and take the year now say i am starting from 2015 right we are at 2021 when you look at the randomness curve of this particular examination it was something like this right you would see a steep raise in the randomness with respect to questions being asked now there are comments there are blogs there are certain social media platforms which come up saying that anything under sun is being asked in the prelims for example if you talk about 2021 there was a question on drumstick tree yes there was a question on tamarind tree right similar way there was a question on palm tree similarly there was a question on core of biology with respect to oysters there was a question with respect to biotechnology on the flip side in the same 2021 you would see questions asking from sports questions being asked from sports now these are your daily observations this is your subject expertise and this is your current affairs portion now in the same 100 questions you would find that a horizon of knowledge is being tested now be it me be it you be it any other aspirant for everybody all these questions will seem very new now in this pretext of prelims examination for that case take your 2021 also sorry 2020 now in 2020 there was a question on artificial intelligence right there was a question on cooperatives there was a question on ground water body similarly in the flip side there was a question on history literature with respect to dalit literature now here what is happening is again they are trying to test a wide set of knowledge now why am i talking about randomness becoming more in prelims examination trust me it is all number game right you would see right roughly around 800 to 900 vacancies are there you get roughly 9 lakh applications and you would have say 10000 people writing means now it see, look at the proportion that upsc has to eliminate now if it has to eliminate so many people it has to give a random paper it is not that you will learn something up front and go and write now now when you look at my particular experience 
of clearing all six prelims of scoring more than 110 plus more, scoring more than 130 plus that means prelims is going to be easy if you have a strategy it is going to be easy if you have a strategy now this particular strategy has two pretext conditions whoever it may be meet beat your first attempt beat your second attempt beat your third whatever it is it has certain pretext conditions the first prerequisite for making the strategy work whatever we are going to discuss in the next 40 days like that particular schedule will be discussed with you the first thing is the basic knowledge the basic knowledge now basic knowledge you have certain basic resources like your ncert right like your other standard books lakshmikan or for your economy whichever economic book you are following certain basic sets now this basic knowledge has to be clear now trust me my dear when you go back and look at the last 6 years question papers this start might be little boggling but when you look at this particular last 6 years question paper you would see 60 questions out of 100 from ncert i'll prove this particular point when i'm taking that 40 day session right i'll be taking a 40 day session little later i'll discuss about the details towards the fag end of this particular session right but when you look at when you analyze this particular paper past 6 years at least 60 questions out of 100 are from ncert now people say history is becoming very random history is becoming very difficult trust me this year for example if you talk about that <coughs> tipu sultan question or if you talk about that sri krishna devaraya or vijayanagara question with respect to women bodyguards with respect to t2 telling all those things that four options now these two questions were from ncert right now in that case your quality is also from a standard source lakshmi kam so when you are having a certainty of 60 questions from a set source why can't we build upon it right most of us what we do is we think that we have read ncrts in 3 months generally in your foundation course they say take 3 months finish ncrts keep them aside keep them in your puja room right every day put one incense stick right put all sindoor everything that's what they are telling most of us do that but the fundamental understanding of ncrts is, is if you have the capacity of by hearting by heart it because when you in your first reading of 3 months i think you would have attained the basic fodder when you have got your basic fodder automatically it is very easy for you to memorize things which are repeating the first prerequisite of working out this particular strategy whatever we have devised for next 40 days is you need to have basic knowledge now for you to have basic knowledge these fundamental things they say no stick to basics one of the famous dialogues of dhoni ms dhoni one of the great captains of india is he says stick to basics and he talks about something called as controlling the controllable factors now for us controlling the 60 questions is extremely important out of 100 we learn in that 40 days how are we going to control these 60 questions i'll show you some beautiful math also towards the middle of the session that we are going to go very logically of cracking prelims because if you are getting above 100 once you write paper and come back and check with any key and if you are getting above 100 that means you are going to clear, clear prelims because when you look at the dynamic of the upsc prelims i think from 2018 onwards the cutoffs were something like this 98 98 last year it was i think 92 how much last year 95 okay whatever 95 or 98 whatever 96 so around 90s around 90s i think this year also it would have been roughly around 92 to 95 now this particular 90s figure 
and when we are able to ensure the 60 questions and ensure 100 plus i think we can safely prepare for means because now you need to understand that once you write prelims and come back you need to be sure of clearing it also because upsc takes roughly around 30 days for it to declare its results now that means if you are not confident of clearing prelims you will be in a double mind whether to prepare for mains or not right that means in those 30 days nothing is going to be progressing you are going to lose those 30 days that means from the candidate who is scoring above 100 and the candidate who is little dicey about whether clearing prelims or not he has already a difference of 30 days which is roughly 300 hours 300 hours which is sufficient enough for you to complete one paper in your optional so controlling the controllable factor is extremely important when it comes to prelims paper this is first prerequisite the second prerequisite with respect to working out the strategy is previous year papers there is no bigger coaching institute than ups trust me when it comes to previous year question papers there is no better guidance now for example i'll tell you why am i giving this statement that just see this now suppose if i take history right if i take history now you can check it once the session is over also from past 8 years there is no question paper without vijayanagara kingdom there is no question paper without vijayanagara kingdom for once upsc had defaulted this particular trend of asking a question from vijayanagara kingdom that was in 2017 where they had asked kakati you can check this right then there was no question paper of prelims without a question on gandhi ji i think last year with respect to that book that was written the answer was gandhi ji now it is a trick now in the 40 day session we have devised roughly 16 templates we have devised roughly 16 templates whether you know the answer or not applying one of these 16 templates you will be able to arrive at the correct answer now one of such template is we were seeing that wherever you find gandhi ji in the option that is the answer because upsc is obsessed with gandhi ji considering the importance he is the father of the nation he is obsessed or upsc as an institution is obsessed with gandhi ji this year mains also they had asked a stand alone 15 marker on gandhi ji right you can safely tick that and come out that's what i had done in this year prelims 2021 gandhi ji and that was the answer nobody heard about that particular book so this particular 16 templates that we had devised is completely on the basis of dynamics of ups now for snt we have roughly four templates now from past two years now one of those four templates has been demystified one particular template of snt used to be that wherever you find all of the above with respect to a snt question mark it and come but from past two years upsc has changed this dynamic now there is a different dynamic that is evolving as an alternative to this particular dynamic in snt you need to understand trust me my dear with soul reading you will not be able to crack this particular prelims because gone are those days where the prelims is factual you talk about 2015 you read you get it you talk about 2016 you read you get it you talk about 2017 there was a little bit change bringing in the randomness that's what we have seen that randomness curve sometime back here if you prepare your basic books if you prepare the current affairs magazine you will be able to go on clear prelims and come out right because that time number of people writing prelims were roughly 4 lakhs even less than that 3 lakhs now look from 2018 2019 2020 and 2021 you would see 
that every year upsc is following a different pattern here it was a greater mix of current affairs along with unconventional questions in ncert from ncert that was 2018 pattern then when you talk about 2019 they again stuck to fundamentals with a decent proportion of current affairs then 2020 2021 you would see the current affairs missing right that's what we observe generally people say 2020 2021 they are not asking current affairs but in a while we'll see this is also a wrong phenomena with respect to assumption of the trend of 2020 and 2021 right now for example why was dolavira asked in 2021 paper it was in current affairs basically they were they have declared five cultural heritage sites and dolavira was one among it they were developing it right this was one yes or no and with respect to your world heritage site tag it had got it right now don't you think it is current affairs don't you think it is current affairs people say it is not because it is part of history history also has current affairs my dear this is one example the second example why was a question on mpc asked monetary policy committee why was a question asked i think it was asked in 2021 they had asked with respect to section 7 section 7 of your rbi act right mpc the fundamental reason is with respect to your the something called as accommodative policy that has been followed by your rbi during covid the fundamental genesis of mpc as a question was from the accommodative policies that have been followed by rbi during covid now again there was a question on cooperative why because i think the urban cooperatives have come under the ambit of rbi that was as part of your current affairs now why was a question on forex there was a question on forex there was a question on capital account why because indian forex has reached the highest roughly around 600 billion dollars now don't you think all of them have an extrapolated current affairs linkage now we fail to understand this aspect upsc is deriving its static part from the current affairs that are order of the day previously it used to happen that they used to directly pick up the current affairs and give now it is that you have abundance of material it is something called as infodemic when you have this abundance of material when you have this infodemic now upsc knows everybody is prepared with a set of current affairs it expects one step ahead now the same trend you can observe even in your polity same trend you can observe in your polity also now everybody reads lakshmi kan right till 2019 sorry 2018 roughly around 25 to 28 questions from polity used to come and everybody used to answer them more or less correct right out of 25 to 28 at least 20 you could have kept them correct right that means your 40 marks in a prelims exam was confirmed from lakshmi kan now again from 2020 2021 you would see upsc started to shift from polity to political thought it started to shift from polity to political theories this year there were three questions on political theories last year there were two questions right and from lakshmi kanth also you would find that it's no more ratifying ratifying here lakshmi kanth because now they are going for again an extrapolated current affairs linkage because your polity is directly linked with your current affairs and they are asking on that basis it is no more governor no more president it is all current affairs linked polity 
now understanding this trend is extremely important because now when you look at prelims examination why it becomes so tough to clear prelims examination is the first thing is multiple sources multiple sources you talk about say with your textbooks you have multiple textbooks for same quality you have subhas kashyap you have lakshmi kan you have xyz tomorrow one of us will write a book on quality yes because we study so much for quality if you talk about test series we have multiple test series right you talk about x test series when you are solving x test series you will feel y test series is good somebody one of your friends come and says are y test series is very good let's solve it now both of you will sit will start x as well as y test series now some third person will come and say are z test series is very good every year upsc asks 40 questions from z test series now all three of you x y z finally you land up doing nothing if you succeed in solving x y z but you will fail certainly in revision don't you think those who have given prelims don't you think this is a very common mistake we make it's very common it is all about human psyche the human psyche is we don't believe in the process what we are doing now tomorrow suppose say if i have to write if i am given a chance to write next attempt i will follow the same 40 day strategy i will not change it because from past 6 years whatever be the paper i am succeeding right most of the times i clear indian forest service also for a service cut off which is which more than 20 marks 15 20 marks above your general cut off now it is only that you have to restrict this to one source now this particular restricting of this one source is you can devolve that particular job to me right we will be doing in those 40 days trust me 40 days i am not going to take more than 3 hours of your time i will not take more than 3 hours of your time right we will discuss all the important areas of all the subjects only in an exam orientation only in an exam orientation we'll discuss little more on that particular 40 days towards the end this is one reason why most of us fail to clear prelims the second is practice now when you go and ask a particular person are babu how are you studying for prelims he says i am reading 14 hours every day very good you should read everybody will say i am reading 14 hours a day nobody will say i am practicing 6 hours a day now even though you think that you are practicing 6 hours a day it is broken like one hour how many hour questions i will solve i will solve then by that time i am tired i go for a tea break which is 15 minutes now again i'll come back now if i'm in the mood of solving another one hour i'll solve otherwise i'll postpone it to end of the day now you need to understand that the exam is all about mind game trust me exam is all about mind game here there are only two players one upsc two yourself right and 99% of the aspirants they are in a presumption that upsc is a very deceptive player for suppose it has asked about discretionary powers of president say which of the following are the discretionary powers of the president just take an example we being what we are and we being upsc aspirants quote unquote we see that upsc will not ask such a simple question we think upsc is a very big deceptive player it is a gambler 
and upsc is trying to gamble with you now for good or bad reasons i don't understand from where we acquire this particular trait that upsc is very deceptive but we somehow put in our brains that it is very deceptive and what do we do it has asked something more than discretionary powers of president it is not straight forward question now what we do for one or two minutes which we allot to that particular question in that half minute goes off in what is the catch in this particular question and at the end of that one minute we'll mark it wrong and stop now for example this year there was a question on bollard 1 and bollard 2 do you all remember yes bollard 1 bollard 2 that asked now it is a very straight forward question it is something related to genetic crops gm crops it is a pest which attacks your cotton crop bollard 1 bollard 2 now we being what we are we being upsc aspirants we see four options bollard 1 bollard 2 if it was given without any options we will straight away say it is related to cotton plant but it giving four options the first option itself upsc plays very clever it gives what we think that it is i don't know they are always one step ahead now what we do we are in the trap we are in the trap we are thinking that upsc is deceptive now it is thinking that anyway this fellow is thinking i am deceptive and he is giving you the wrong option as first option now in that exam pressure we mark that and come out we mark that we come out we come out and check the key we are half depressed because it is a very silly mistake and 99% of the aspirants miss their prelims cut off just by three questions for a serious aspirant who had prepared for one long year if you are attempting a prelims exam i bet you you can cross check at max they would have missed the prelims cut off by three questions which is roughly six marks plus two negative eight marks now don't you think these three questions are questions like this this is one as2 do you all remember there was one question in 2021 as2 that is one another straight forward question right we make such mistakes because we think we are upsc is deceptive and we think we want to over smart upsc and we lose the battle now all such dogmas or all such prejudices that are present with respect to this upsc as an institution with respect to this particular exam will be demolished only with practice only with practice you trust me for all the six attempts i would have minimum solved 6000 plus questions minimum for every attempt before entering into every attempt i would have solved at least 6000 questions now this is minimum in fact in fact if i talk about my first two attempts i think roughly around 13000 questions had solved for first attempt and second attempt because then i was little naive with respect to devising of this particular strategy but on a later attempts once i know that if i do this i'll crack it i've been solving like roughly 6000 questions so the second most important thing which people fail is practice you will enroll in some test series you will go and write and you will get some less marks and you will not go for the next test this is what happens and the third thing what people why people fail so often is learning from mistakes now you might think sir if i am giving my first attempt how will i learn from my mistakes now this learning from mistakes is from this when you are practicing certain set of questions it is very certain that we will make certain mistakes right we will make certain mistakes now those mistakes we have to learn and suppose say in your first test 
if you are making say roughly 20 silly mistakes which is very often in first test most of the people will not have that particular rapport or momentum we make 20 silly mistakes but when you are coming to your 50th test the only aim of you should be reducing this to one or two because automatically when you reduce 20 silly mistakes to one or two simple math what does it will turn out to be say you are making say 21 for easy calculation say you are making 21 silly mistakes in your first test that means how many marks you are losing you are losing roughly 14 marks you are losing 14 marks straight away now say when i reach my 50th test if i make it into one or two so i'll make it three easy for calculation i'm losing only two marks i'm losing only two marks i'm gaining marks of 18 questions which is 36 right so on an average in the simple exercise i'm going to get 48 marks simple funda yes we will see in those 40 days how to reduce these numbers because at the end of the day if you are gaining 48 marks i don't think it is uh, any tougher business for you to clear plus because plus 48 i think you can get roughly around 60 on your own at whatever stage if you have studied for one year plus 48 will give us magic figure of 100 plus yes now you need to understand that you need to understand that these three are in a algorithmic format now what do you mean by algorithmic format is once you cut down your sources once you cut down your sources and stick to one particular source automatically you will have time yes yes when you have time the best way of utilizing that particular time is practice because you need to by yourself check that how much i Studied. Whether what I studied is I am able to apply and I am able to solve a question. So it is interlinked. Now once I practice, it is very certain that you will observe your mistakes. Once you observe your mistakes and once you keep them or once you write them somewhere else and once you keep them in your mind or once you revise them before attempting the next exam, it is very certain. that you will cut down your silly mistakes now for you to verify your progress there is one simple table which you can follow right there is one simple table which you can follow for you to verify your progress across your test now take it for granted that you need to solve at least 60 tests before entering prelims examination that is the minimum you can do now 60 tests does not mean simply i solve i read it for one time and i dump it somewhere no we will see how to do that particular process now one simple table what you can follow or what you can write on every question paper that you solve is number of questions attempted the first rubric is number of questions attempted then number of questions that are correct number of questions that are incorrect number of questions that are left right this is one simple table now in this number of questions incorrect you need to see how many are silly mistakes how many are silly mistakes you need to note them down now how do you classify a silly mistake is take a question now you are solving your paper for say 1 and 1/2 hour 
you are taking a question you are solving it for one and a half hour the paper and you have marked this particular question wrong when you come out of that particular exam mood and when you look at that particular question and if you are able to answer it correct then it is a silly mistake because you are the same person who has answered it wrong some time back and you are the same person who is answering it correct after that exam mood or after that one and a half hour span that is a silly mistake and take it for granted or trust me in your first 10 to 15 tests such questions will range from 15 to 20 such questions will range from 15 to 20 so you need to make a note how many are silly mistakes point number 1 how many are because of lack of revision now once you are able to classify your incorrect questions into these two trust me your business is done because now from this particular list of lack of revision you will know which all topics you need to revise simple yes it is very simple say consistently you are making a mistake on a question on ordinals that means it is high time you open ordinals and you revise it you revise your article 123 and you revise your article 213 yes you need to revise the conditions of ordinals you need to revise the applicability of ordinals yes so now once you make this list because of lack of revision i am making such questions mistake automatically you will revise now say if the question is on the basis of current affairs i am making a mistake on a question on current affairs that means i have to revise it simple funda again right now the only business across your preparation of this prelims is eliminating this eliminating this eliminating this because now this silly mistake chunk in your incorrect questions will be roughly 20 now for suppose say you are attempting out of 100 say suppose you are attempting take a decent number 85 questions for example now if you are attempting 85 questions now say 20 are silly mistakes right say 20 are silly mistakes and other 15 to 20 are some mistakes which you don't know it is because of lack of knowledge right now here how much it is landing up to 40 incorrect questions now out of 85 that means 45 and 40 what's your score roughly around 75 or even less yes now say you are trying to eliminate this now when you eliminate this don't you think 20 are going away from here and adding 20 here so here it is 65 and 21 generally this is my proportion right now what it is 130 and 21 is how much 14 14 130 it is 11 simple maths so when you are solving your 50 plus or 60 plus question papers your funda is going to be that how am i going to eliminate my silly mistakes right after this now when you look at the sequence of understanding the steps that are to be done in a prelims examination and when you make that particular chart you are arriving at two things one silly mistakes two where i am lacking revision these two there will be third set which is called as unknown in every paper trust me you will have 22 25 questions which are unknown right i think for example talk about 2021 paper only right there was a question on copper slag 
there was a question on copper slug most of the aspirants had gone for all of the above but i think the answer is only three among them right copper slug now that we would not have heard anywhere right then there will be some time scientific even that oyster question i i think most of you all did not hear but oyster question was a previous year question it was a previous year question where it had a link with corals they are talked about feeders now coral is classified as one of the feeder now when you look at the interlinkage between coral and oyster the common is shell structure shell structure so the third point we are arriving at here is the importance of previous year questions now previous year questions what we do we take last 11 years or 10 years question paper we'll see we'll solve abba it is very easy we are able to solve every question right now what we do once we solve the question we'll just see the option and we think we have solved the previous year questions but the business does not end there the business with respect to previous year questions is we have to cross section every question and learn the ins and outs of that particular question that's what we'll be doing even as part of your 40 days now for the past 11 year question papers i will be dissecting every topic and we'll be looking at out all the aspects of that particular topic trust me at least 25 questions were repeated in 2021 this might seem exaggerated but no i'll show you all these proofs what i am talking in those 40 days once you were thoroughly prepared with last 10 year question papers i am very sure you could have got gun shot 25 questions because see understand the psyche of upsc also now see now somebody has to pass the exam right it is it is not that everybody has to fail somebody upsc has to get that 10000 members now just imagine all these 100 questions it gives something very random how many of us will do it will become a toss game we'll take a 1 rupee coin or we'll take a dice for every question will become shakuni and put that die whichever number comes say if one come option a if two comes option b if three comes option four if four comes option this if six comes none of the above we'll do something like this right when you look at the psyche of upsc every year there is there are 25 plus questions from previous years it is not exaggerated my dear 25 plus questions from previous year now previous year does not mean it lifts the same question from 2011 and gives you here that is ridiculous because when you look at the level of the competition in the exam everybody would have by hearted with answers with questions previous year questions be it for mains or be it for prelims now question from previous year does not mean a direct verbatim of previous years the question from previous year is what it is all about extrapolation now one topic would have been asked in 2011 they would have extended this particular topic in 2014 now the same topic would be extended in 2020 now all these are part of your previous year only so what i say is when you are reading this particular question we need to cover all this diameter now when we are able to cover all this diameter logically don't you think till whatever it can go don't you think it is going to be part of us we will be ready for answering such questions right now when we are able to do this when we are able to do this particular extrapolation activity 
this particular component is automatically going to reduce right so one technique of reducing this unknown component is pyq trust me after this session you can go and validate all the statements right because prelims as an exam has been completely diagnosed okay completely diagnosed it is not certainly not easy to clear all six right so the key for prelims is ready now out of with faith and convention i can say that this component can be reduced with complete cross section of previous equations point number 1 point number 2 is something called as techniques something called as techniques now what are these techniques you will see that prelims as an exam is all about elimination now we think prelims as an exam is all about answering what we do we read the question we will try finding out the answer that is not the process the process has to be reverse engineering in your brain now say you have a question you are left with you are given four options the general approach or the correct approach what i would say of solving a question in your upsc prelims is eliminating the wrong option we will not put a tick mark but what we start the process is by eliminating option c is not the answer option d is not the answer option b is not the answer so what i am left with i am left with option c so the whole process is elimination now there is a logic behind saying this particular statement that prelims as an exam is all about elimination now when you look at the logic what happens is now say you have 100 questions 100 questions say 20 polity 20 economy and 20 history and say some some rest miscellaneous 40 now out of this 100 questions the direct questions which you would have solved somewhere which you would have read somewhere will hardly be 30 to 40 yes when you look on the face of the paper are a question ekado choose and i have seen this particular question somewhere now such questions will only be like 30 to 40 that means if you follow the process of answering the question you should be able to answer only 30 to 40 questions because rest others will seem very new we would not have read anywhere we would not have seen anywhere in such questions it is all about the process of elimination when you are trying to or when you try to eliminate the option you are going to answer that particular question now this elimination can happen on the basis of knowledge point number 1 it can happen on the basis of experience i have seen this particular thing somewhere now for example if you talk about that drumstick question they had asked the question on drumstick drumstick leaves now it is not that i mean those people who are with botany zoology they can answer that particular question but common most of us are engineers right proud to be engineers right now what we do is we don't have knowledge on it we have experience when you will talk about experience now when i was kid i used to see where it grows how it grows i am from a drought region when when i am from a drought region certainly an evergreen plant will not grow in a drought region right so when when i find that this particular drumstick tree is evergreen i will automatically eliminate it because my experience says that it does not grow in a drought region and upsc was also expecting the same for that question because once you eliminated that option that it does not grow in an evergreen you were arriving at the answer so the second source of elimination is your experience you might have learned something in your ukg lkg also trust me you have to use it you never know when what comes for example now again in 2017 if i am not wrong 
there was a question on receding breach the answer was chandipur there was a question on receding breach i think if you refer 2017 question paper this was there the answer was chandipur now this particular question was picked up from a kitkat cover it was a question that was asked on kitkat cover we enjoy the chocolate we relish the chocolatey taste of kitkat but upsc relishes the questioning format from the particular kitkat cover now it does not mean we buy all the chocolates in the market and see what is there behind it no what i am telling is gain the experience if you are aware about your surroundings the surroundings is nothing but your newspaper point number 1 point number 2 your socialization process wherever you have been brought up whatever you have learned during your schooling is going to help you here right second is experience the third process of elimination is techniques now you open your youtube right when you open your youtube and type upsc prelims elimination techniques you will get roughly around 140 150 videos right you will get around roughly 140 150 videos everybody will be blabbering something we'll watch it in 2x we'll think that we have learned the elimination techniques come on let me apply but when you go and apply nothing applies there that's what happens right now when it comes to this particular elimination techniques you need to understand that the rationality behind using that technique has to be understood right because now for example i told you, you know the example of snt questions when you open your youtube and see this i think the first technique they'll teach you in if you get a question on snt mark all of them and come i think upsc fellow also watches those elimination techniques yes certainly he'll be watching now when he watches it acha this fellows are are doing something kirkiri here let me do something different what you need to understand is you need to know the rationality behind that particular technique now that rationality does not come with your youtube because it's all a passive medium of knowledge now for understanding this techniques as i told you we have 16 templates you believe it or not i am not exaggerating i told you that component of right 30 to 40 or 20 to 30 unknown questions when you apply these 16 techniques out of this 20 to 30 unknown questions i can bet you you will get 15 plus correct because now as per my experience i'll tell you let me put one attempt attempt so that i'll i can substantiate my point say out of 100 questions say out of 100 questions take the example of say 2017 right 2017 was the year where elimination techniques were on highlight okay i attempted 96 questions right i attempted 96 that means out of those 20 30 unknown questions i should have at least eliminated or attempted at least 26 questions yes now out of 96 i had got roughly 78 correct 78 correct 18 wrong 78 is how much 156 12 it is 144 right 144 but i think that year they had taken off two questions they had eliminated two questions just like last year right i think my score was somewhere around 138 in 2017 now here what is happening is in spite of not being heard of 20 to 30 questions i am able to attempt 96 questions and i am able to land with such a good number now say out of this 26 i think i would have got wrong around 10 to 12 i don't remember the pattern right 10 to 12 now that means i would have got at least 14 correct of them 
it's all logical my dear now the biggest advantage of prelims is it is very objective the biggest advantage of prelims is, is very very objective but the market but the people make it very random trust me no it is not random once you have a clarified strategy once you have a clarified process once you have a clarified practice trust me getting a magic figure of 100 plus is not at all difficult it is not at all difficult now again and let me substantiate this particular point now i think from past three attempts i have been writing my exam in hyderabad but previously i studied in delhi now past three exams i have been writing my mains in hyderabad every year save for main center you will have 500 people 500 people for every main center at least 400 of them are very common to me that means the people who have cracked that particular art of clearing prelims are repeatedly cracking it yes the same person comes next year also the same person comes next year also how can he be so confident how can it be so repetitive yes yes or no the only thing is you need to have strategy now because say if you if you think that i will not learn these techniques i am a person of virtue i am a person of integrity i don't want to go for any jugadu methods i'll be straight forward i don't want to learn this elimination techniques say you will be able to answer 60 questions maximum now human psyche under exam pressure answering 60 questions trust me at least 15 questions will go wrong however confident you are say at least 10 right at least 10 will go wrong now when 10 or 12 out of 60 goes wrong what is your score going to be 48 12 96 48 88 you are already out of magic figure so the fourth important thing when it comes to prelims examination is number of questions you are attempting number of questions you are attempting now let's do simple math again because see i need to substantiate these are very abstract things because this has worked out to me i need to make you believe also that this is going to work and only math is very objective csat right for so many of them csat has become a nightmare we'll see we'll see that also right number of attempts say i have attempted 70 and this is my attempt right and my accuracy is extremely good now when my accuracy is extremely good say 80% is my accuracy okay if if 80% of if 80% 80 is my accuracy how many are correct 56 56 are correct 14 are wrong say i'll make it 15 and 55 right now what is my score going to be it is going to be 100 because 110 15 10 100 you are on border after exam 80% of the aspirants will say are i am on border ataina padachu itaina padachu goda meda pilli we never know i am on border right i am on border i am getting 100 around now this is a border score say so i attempted 95 now here i am taking my accuracy percentage is 80% which is near impossible in upsc exam if you are able to maintain an accuracy of roughly 70 to 70 75% then you are suppose if you are attempting it with a similar accuracy percentage around 90 your score will be 130 roughly because my accuracy percentage always is 72% on an average on an average it is 72% so take that particular percentage for this for 95 questions if i am taking 7 35 63 68 so roughly 70 questions are correct 69 70 questions are correct 25 are wrong 
Now what I am getting 140. Say I'll make it 24 or 27, whatever figure you want to make it. 24, right? Now how many are going? 8, 16, 124. Now here I am having an accuracy percentage of only 70, which is practical in an UPSC prelims examination. Now, why this simple math has been done is the biggest defeat what most of the aspirants see is we have attempted only 75 questions. We have attempted only 65 questions. We have attempted only 80 questions. Trust me, my dear. If your attempt is not more than 85, you're already out of the race. Because for the dynamics of the 2020, 2021, if you're attempting only 80 questions, we are nowhere going to make it into the mains list. Take it for granted. You don't need to check your key also. Because it is humanly impossible to acquire so much knowledge and attempt with 80% accuracy in UPSC prelims, which is near impossible. Right? So the biggest thing that you need to remember is you need to attempt at least 85 questions. Now, above 85, it depends. Now, if the paper is extremely difficult, you can restrict at 85 to 90. If the paper is moderate, you can take it up to 95. Right? Now, how will you get your accuracy percentage? I can strongly say that my accuracy percentage is 72. How can I say that? I can say that from this table. From this table. Now, how many questions I attempted? How many questions are correct? When I do it in a percentage, I'll get my accuracy percentage. Now, for you to improve your accuracy percentage, again, the funda lies in eliminating silly mistakes. Right? Seems logical. It's very, very logical, my dear. Now, once you're able to understand the process, now I think working towards this particular process is extremely easy. Because now say you have four months from Feb 5th, I'm taking it from Feb 5th, for example. You have four months, that is 120 days, right? Now, when you have 120 days, <coughs> out of this, roughly 40 to 50 days, we're going to spend time together, right? 40 to 50 days, we're going to spend time together, right? <coughs> Prior to that, apart from that, you have 80 days with you, right? Now, in your first reading itself, you remember you finished your NCRTs in three months which was 90 days. Now from that 90 days, one year or two years or three years has passed. Don't you think you can complete all your NCRTs in 30 days with good revision? How much time does a sixth class NCRT take for a person who, is, who has been preparing for two years? Hardly two hours. Yes, because you just need to flip. The font is anyway bold. Now, what is the process of talking about the 30 days is revise the basic books. Revise the basic books. Because we have seen for you to apply those elimination techniques, the prerequisite is knowledge. The pre second prerequisite was previous equations. Now, once you are able to revise, out of which you are left with 50 days. Out of these 30 days, I'm not taking this 40. 40 to 50 days, right? Keep this as revision period. 80 days out of 80, I've taken out 30 days for you to revise your basic books. I'm left with 50 days. Per se, every day if I solve one paper, every day if I solve only one paper, how many I'll be solving? 50 papers. Yes, 50 papers. Now, in this 50 papers, say each paper will have 100 questions. Each paper will have 100 questions. Now, out of these 100 questions, in this 100 questions, the institute or the organization, they basically try to cover at least 50 topics. 
you can verify minimum of 50 topics will be covered right now when you are able to cover 50 topics per paper you are covering roughly 2500 topics topics now that means you solve the question paper and you don't dump it you read the solution part of it also you mark which is important also you will note down what is important also right so this 2500 topics so this is your first cycle of revision your basic books this is your second cycle of revision and this 40 50 days is the third cycle of revision if you are able to revise what you have read for 3 to 4 times trust me nobody can stop you in prelims examination trust me if you are able to revise this 50 papers because now again for you to do your one paper now let me come to the solving part of it how to solve a paper in this practice sessions in this practicing how to solve a paper we think we can break it into 50 50 50 ones i'll solve one in the morning 50 i'll solve in the evening trust me break that particular cycle the practice if you take one question paper put a time of 1 and 1/2 hour now there is a logic behind 1 and 1/2 hour why you will have 2 hours in your examination right 5 minutes your process 5 to 10 minutes suppose by mistake if you bubble something wrong in your omr that examiner he will create such a ruckus that you have asked for his property are aa matram teliyada you don't don't you have sense there say 5 to 10 minutes will fly away now you are left with 1 hour 50 minutes out of this 20 minutes your omr your adjustments your psych your mental right we become all emotional in paper at the end of the day we are indians right one very common feature all indians have is we are very emotional are upsc vaadu enduka question adigedu chinna pudu munaga chetta aduku ekki aadukone valle ippudu ala question enduku adigedu my friends used to push me from that particular drumstick tree today upsc is pushing me from upsc prelims so what is balance all those emotions right now for you to balance all those emotions this one and a half hour is extremely crucial when you solve this one and a half hour funda what happens is what happens is now that pressure that emotions that rush of adrenaline everything is being maintained now if it is not maintained also you have a question of 20 minutes you have a question of 20 minutes yes i can sit relax eat some snickers eat some or drink something i can attend to my paper right so when you are able to practice this one and a half hour when you are solving solve it for one and a half hour immediately may not be immediately on the same day read the solution part for that question paper whichever you have solved read the solution part now when you are reading the solutions part you need to understand for normal human beings apart from chitti robo will take roughly 3 to 4 hours it will take 3 to 4 hours for your first reading of solutions it varies from the question paper to question paper the solution size to solution size so the whole process will roughly take to 5 to 6 hours trust me for all the hours you spent on reading or on one side which are equally weighed with these 5 to 6 hours every day now once you are able to do this 5 to 6 hours for 50 days religiously i watch for it nobody is going to stop you trust me that magic figure of 100 plus it is going to be a cake walk you you solve this 50 question papers you put the table 
and you focus on minimizing your silly mistakes you focus on revision nobody is going to stop you no wonder if you get 130 also now i'll take an example for this now there was one friend of mine who has not cleared prelims for four consecutive attempts this was a case of 2019 right this was a case of 2019 Who has not cleared consecutively his first four attempts, he did not clear, right? Then he comes up to me and says, "Arey Babu, what is that magic? What is that black magic you do to crack prelims?" I said, "Nothing." I told him the same fundas. I told him the same process which I follow, right? That year, 2019 prelims. I think when you go back and refer to the question paper, that was pretty tough. Right, that year I got one thirty-two. That fellow had got one forty-eight. For a person who was not clearing his prelims consecutively for four years, scoring one forty-eight is not a easy thing. Now I am not talking about that this particular strategy is a foolproof strategy, but it has been tested. It has been working. Personally, it has been working. on a localized models also have number of friends who are applying it a number of friends who are applying it a number of friends who are able to successfully clear so i thought why not take this strategy to a larger scale so that more number of you people can write mains the confidence of clearing prelims is is going to be very high certain right okay so when you are practicing your question paper this is how it is going to be now with respect to general prelim strategy this is what your business is all about now the second part of this particular session is what are we going to do right now i need to give that strategy Lakshmeshwar has to infuse his strategy. Now, when these strategies have to be augmented and complemented, we need some time to spend together. Now, this particular thing here, it is all about learning through questions. It is all about learning through questions, right? we'll be having 100 question test every day okay 100 question test every day and it is going to be subject wise <coughs> it is going to be subject wise now this 100 question test is followed by a two and a half hour session right this two and a half hour session what are we going to do is i told you all no that upsc is going to extrapolate from a particular previous year question now what we'll do in this two and a half hour session is cover all the aspects of that particular topic suppose you get a question on gupta in your history paper you get a question on gupta there are 10 to 12 points which you need to remember for gupta when you are attempting your prelims right those 10 to 12 points will be quickly discussed or dictated or given whatever it is this is one thing that we are going to do as part of this one of hours apart from this you will be given set of previous year questions right from 2011 to 2021 from 2011 to 2021 you will be given subject wise previous year question modules right now every week there is going to be a weekly target on it right for suppose if you are if the first 10 days is history then in that particular one week you are going to have <coughs> you will have history previous year questions to be solved and every sunday every sunday there is going to be a 3 hour session 
on elimination techniques because for us upsc prelims paper is no better template for learning these elimination techniques now this elimination techniques does not mean all of the above techniques no those youtube techniques if one option is given write one option if all of the options are given write all of the above if only is given eliminate only no as part of elimination techniques we love discussing these 16 templates now what do you basically mean by 16 templates just to give you an taste of this particular 16 templates now for suppose in polity every year there are at least five topics which are repeated there are at least five topics which are repeated every year right for example here fundamental rights for example an elements of dpsp along with fundamental duties for example a question on judiciary we have list of such repeated question now in these five topics or for polity as a subject we will have two templates templates in the sense you need to see say now generally when you observe polity questions it is of three to four types right it is of three to four types first question is like they'll give a statement and they'll ask you find out what is the above concept what is the above concept for for example this year's rule of law right for example this year's rule of law this is one template the second template is which is direct for example in 2018 there was a question i think in 2018 yes in 2018 there was a question which among the following dpsps were added as part of amendment this is a direct question yes yes or no for example 43a right or your 43b or your 48a 47a all these are as part of your amendments now this is one direct template this is concept template there is one more template with respect to polity bodies and organizations now in this bodies and organizations you will find that upsc will have a fixed template with respect to whether it is a statutory body whether it is an executive body whether it is a constitutional body that is one option one template it has or with respect to the composition or with respect to the ministry right now when we are able to break whole of polity into these three templates or four templates one more template don't you think it is easy for you to answer because now breaking into templates is extremely important so that your orientation of study is also going to shift towards this now whenever you are reading any constitutional body or whenever you are reading any organization as part of your polity the first thing you need to refer is it is under which ministry because in this body's template we have seen that upsc is often asking about ministries the second template or the second thing that you need to see whether it is a statutory body executive body or constitutional body the third thing you need to see whether it has any different composition for example lokpal for example appointments for example removals now whenever you are seeing your bodies if you remember these three things i think your prelims aspect is clear because most of us will get confused who removes upsc chairman who removes cag who appoints cag yes now when we are able to emphasize understanding the template of this particular exam now it is easy now whenever you are reading whenever you are revising your eyes will go on whether it is which under which ministry your cbi is under which ministry it is ministry of home affairs or dopt or whichever it is you will refer what is the composition who will refer who is appointing it now whenever you are reading your fundamental duties whenever you are reading your fundamental rights you will see what are the exceptions with respect to fundamental rights 
you will see what are the fundamental rights which are given through amendments your article 21a like for example you will see what are the dpsps you will see what are called as liberal dpsps you will see what are called as gandhian dpsps you will see what are called as social dpsps now understanding the template is extremely important so that your revision cycle is easy that is what is meant by templates now once you understand this template that history has fixed template now when you talk about history now let me give an example for history also one is personality based it is personality based which among the following for example last year there was a question on one on dalit literature right there were two people who were related to dalit literature one was jyotiba phule and the other person was some other person other two could be eliminate one is personality based then next event based events for example be it your any of those phases of your national movement or your tribal movements or your peasant movements or your worker movements or your trade union movements any of those movements the second template is event based third is post independence post independence this year in 2022 prelims it is very certain for them to go and ask on a question on post independence especially 1970s this year it is very certain indira gandhi era is one operation flood is one these two out of these two i think with my experience and instincts one question from 1970s is certainly going to come right so now these three are templates for history now whenever we are reading some literature on history we'll see who has given it simple now i don't need to remember more than anything for a particular book now the easiest source for you to learn this personality is the glossary of your spectrum glossary of your spectrum the last 20 25 pages of your spectrum extremely important now at least for me it is a ritual for last one week before the exam i revise this every day glossary of spectrum because whatever factual stuff has to come you can cover from this particular aspect <coughs> now anyway we will be supplementing it with your ncrts and the cross sectional analysis of your pvq for example rakma bay case last year rakma bay case last year was a repeated question my dear for most of you it was an out of box question trust me it is a previous year question right okay we'll see that previous year analysis okay now this is more or less a broad structure of those 40 days what we are 40 50 days what we are going to do regarding the course details regarding the course date regarding the course fee i think the concern numbers will be provided and you can consult them right the structure of the course is going to be something like this and the general orientation of prelims is something this anybody has any doubts you can ask session is open session is open anybody can ask if you have something to be clarified we can now i think everything was logical right i did not create a scientific fiction here because this is what i followed and i showed you substantiated you with numbers because that's how creates or builds a trust right any questions anybody can ask any of you good morning sir some clarifications good morning sir yes please sir this is dikshita sir okay sir how can we say that the elimination uh, process is uh, easy sir how can i say yes elimination process is easy sir now i have practiced so it is easy to me if you practice it is easy to you also 
right that's why i told you no it's a logical process that we need to follow everybody has not that uh, attitude of elimination process so you see see my dear it is not on the basis of aptitude of the individual right now it is completely on the basis of practice now whatever strategy i told you here trust me it is all generalized right i am not considering any cognitive ability because at the end of the day everybody will have a different cognitive abilities everybody will have a different set of socialization process which will vary a lot but this particular strategy is tested on ground on pilot studies generalizing the cognitive abilities and normalizing all the other factors right that's why initially i told you i am only going to control the controllables now controlling the controllables is only out of practice now trust me this elimination technique it is not a rocket science it is not a rocket science the reason for me to keep that 3 hour session on sunday is to capacity build once you understand once you get the tinge or rationale behind applying that particular elimination technique i think it is more or less easy because in that particular on that particular sunday you learn two or three techniques in the next coming week you will try to apply all those techniques now learning the technique and applying the technique and learning from the mistakes of application is extremely important my dear you need to remember that whole of this orientation i have given is with an assumption that people are at least working for 10 hours a day right it is not that one fine morning i open my blanket i get up now i study only for 4 to 5 hours and i need to master this elimination technique i'll clear prelims now it is assumed that you are dedicated to this process and you are putting in of 8 to 10 hours of study right now if you are putting in 8 to 10 hours of study it is my headache to teach you elimination techniques i'll do that right any other doubts sir i have another question sir yes sir if uh, one day before to prelims that all concepts should be not uh, revisable sir so pardon? what can we do? pardon sir Amma one day before prelims one day before prelims that okay. we we all be not uh, revising all the concepts no sir okay so what should we do sir one day before prelims see now when you talk about just the day before prelims now the first thing is you would have something called as mistakes list yes solving those 50 60 question papers you would have a page written on them that's what i told you noting down all your silly mistakes right looking at this particular mistake list all three sessions your morning afternoon evening is a must doing this is extremely important right because now all that i have given my sixth attempt recently every attempt you make new mistakes every attempt as you evolve your mistakes also will evolve right so making note of them and keeping them in your head specifically is extremely important the second thing is whatever short notes you have made now let me clarify now whatever short notes you have made you are not going to study but you are going to skim there is a difference because now if i say the day before means short notes has to be studied but the day before prelims the short notes has to be skimmed because one biggest advantage in prelims examination is you have the answer in front of you 
you have the answer in front of you when you have the answer in front of you every human being will have something called as intuition every human being will have something called as visual memory right when you see something like if you see a scene somewhere you will say acha this was in that movie do you revise those movies every day no how do you recollect that this particular scene is in this particular movie the brahmanandam will come and tell this particular dialogue visual memory so what are you going to do the day before exam is you are going to skim you are just going to see your short notes now by seeing your short note what happen is you are basically acquainting your eyes with the knowledge or with the short note whatever you have written trust me the day before exam or the week before exam will be high with adrenaline you will not get sleep you will not feel like eating you will not feel like sleeping you will not feel like sitting it will appear as if you have undergone a very hard break up in your life right that particular week or that particular day the only business is this now if you open pile up all what you read in front of you and start reading everything now you will forget what you read all because that week is going to be like that everybody will face the same thing irrespective of what attempt you are giving irrespective of whether you have been clearing it consistently or whether, whether you have not been clearing it consistently you will face the same problem so the simplest technique of handling the last one week or one day short notes see them or in your question papers whatever you have marked don't sit and read see them see them and getting that sense of satisfaction of completion yes i have completed that is extremely important because if you do all this process and you enter the examination hall saying i did not study well or i am not confident about what i did then it's all into gutter there is no point in doing all this right now getting that sense of satisfaction getting that sense of completion is important that can be obtained only if you do this particular process right any other any other doubts sir yes yes my name is damodar sir good afternoon sir good afternoon sir. Sir. Mm, sir if you explain how to approach the csx paper sir it will be same elimination process it will work sir okay okay okay, okay. glad that you reminded me see sir right now this particular paper has become a nightmare for most of us so right now so many people will say morning i am scoring 100 plus see sat i am on border 65 to 67 many people we come across at least this particular kind of comments are very common from 2019 2020 and 2021 what upsc can do it has limited 100 questions in paper 1 so whatever it has to do it has to do only in 100 questions right in paper 1 out of that also it has to repeat from previous years because somebody has to pass somebody has to get some marks and you cannot say the cut off for upsc prelims is 35 that's very embarrassing for the institution that is very embarrassing for the aspirants also so for them to reach at least 80 85 they'll give some easy questions right now upsc has to eliminate people like how we eliminate the options now what it did or what it started doing from 2019 now let me take leverage of this additional 80 questions in this at the now he is increasing his ambit of playing from 100 to 180 because at the end of the day he wants those 10000 people of writing me right from 9 lakhs 10 lakhs 8 lakhs 7 lakhs whatever Five lakhs odd aspirants. <coughs> Now here, what he is trying to do is he 
is trying to emphasize on aptitude now this aptitude of ethics is something different now this is your numerical aptitude and it is an aptitude to interpret because this is what you do in your paragraphs that is your comprehension question this is what you do in your comprehension questions because it says what is the rationale behind this topic or what is the assumptions behind this paragraph or what are the inferences from this paragraph now it is not like in our 10th standard where what is the answer for the question from the paragraph that is not that we have to interpret now here what is happening is both the sections are being made difficult right your numerical aptitude is also going to a tougher end and your interpretative aptitude is also going towards a tougher end now in this case what happens is if the people have this mathophobia or those who fear mathematics they switch for interpretative aptitude and they go for english comprehensions now when they go for english of comprehensions the fundamental thing you need to understand is that the same upsc is setting that paper so whatever elimination techniques we have used in paper 1 will also apply to paper 2 i am not exaggerating again right trust me this is what i do every year okay now by morning paper i would be exhausted completely exhausted because now it's very random maybe i don't have stamina i am a person of low stamina probably i get exhausted in the morning paper so in the afternoon paper I have to play it smart I have to play it smart and I have to play it safe my quant luckily by god's grace it is decent now i cannot completely rely on my quantitative aptitude because a tired brain can make mistakes so what i need to do i need to rely something on this aspect now what i do is now with all faith with all conviction with all integrity and honesty i am telling this i attempt eight comprehensions every year it's a ritual i attempt eight comprehensions now out of these eight comprehensions i choose those comprehensions which are small in nature right which are small in nature and i straight away I, you will have the paragraph you will have the question you will have the options i don't read this paragraph i straight away read the question i straight away see the options now you need to understand and i mark the option confidently and come out right and with all the conviction all eight of them i get right every year i get eight of them right now why am i telling you this process is not to make it look simple but it is that i apply same those elimination techniques is in, in this question because you need to understand that upsc is only the setting the paper now upsc when it is setting its paper when you understand the dynamic and when you understand the length and breadth of upsc how it is going to question option elimination is going to be extremely easy option elimination is going to be extremely easy now in that process in those 40 days i'll take examples of such and will explain you now this is this is a crisis management mechanism now to conventionally go about csat paper right to conventionally go about csat paper quant english right now you need to understand make this paper more objective make this paper more objective because when you look at this particular section when you look at this particular section now say if 10 institutes are coming out with their keys with their answer keys you would find that all 10 of them will have a different answer 
none none of the two institutes will match answer with respect to your english comprehension that means in english comprehension the options given are extremely close they are extremely close right now when you talk about quant it is very objective it is very objective because this quant will have reasoning also reasoning also now for you to be comfortable with this particular section there are two ways of doing it right one <coughs> previous year questions now previous year questions solving previous year questions on the face of it point number 1 point number 2 again the same technique of extrapolation and reading about whole of the topic for example in reasoning every year there is a question on series every year there is a question on series now maximum you can have 6 to 7 types of series questions maximum that is the exhaustive list of 6 to 7 types now when you can do the 6 to 7 types of series questions at least one question you are sure of in quant yes or no in the similar manner arithmetic progression geometric progression every year there is a question for example this year that ball bouncing question ball bouncing question was a geometry progression question you will remember that fellow throws it from a particular height and it bounces it for how many times will it be bouncing it because once it reaches this particular height it will not bounce anymore that's what i think that was the question now every year there is a question on arithmetic and geometric progression for arithmetic and geometric geometric progression you will have three to four formulas arithmetic progression right that an equals to a plus n minus 1 into d sum of this an what is this this is these these are two formulas for arithmetic progression and for geometric progression you will have a by 1 minus r this is for an infinite series right or if it is for a number series it is a power a into r power n by 1 minus r this is one more formula you have four formulas for geometric progression you are done with the topic so when your one source of doing this quant is looking at previous equations extrapolating them learning that series you will have six to seven topics which are repeated every year two of them are these right and if you find mathematics to be very difficult go for reasoning go for reasoning because the reasoning i think reasoning again you should not solve my dear in reasoning questions what you need to do or when we are writing or when we are attempting our cat our professors used to say that in reasoning questions it is all about substitution of the options you will have four options you will start substituting it whichever results in a correct answer that is the correct answer you are basically doing reverse engineering right so in all, most of your reasoning questions can be solved by option substitution you substitute the option you will arrive at the correct answer right now try to maximize your score in this particular section once you try to maximize your score in this particular section now trust me from feb 5 every day you can give one hour there is no harm if you find quant to be very difficult Right, pick up basic R S Agarwal or pick up basic Arihant book of mathematics. One hour you can practice every day because maximizing this section is extremely important. You never know what is the answer in this particular section. At that moment, for you, one option might seem good, but outside the examination hall, some other option might seem good. There is a problem with English comprehension. so if you are able to pull off mathematics to a questions of 20 to 25 20 to 25 now here as a buffer if you are able to attempt 15 of english right say out of this 15 now how many have attempted you have attempted say roughly 40 on a lower end i am saying right on a lower end out of this 15 say 7 or wrong 
Take seven or wrong. Now how many? Thirty-three, seven. Thirty-three are correct. That means seven. So I'm roughly losing two questions. I'm roughly losing two questions. So my net will boil down to thirty questions. Thirty into two point five is seventy-five. Gattak can draw a bushal. I'm passing that. Right? It is not counted anyways. So maximizing this section is extremely important because this particular section is very dicey. Here, apart from now, these reducing this number of wrongs in this English, I'll tell you when I'm talking about that particular those 40, 45 days. I'll tell you those elimination techniques, like what statement to be eliminated, what statement to be kept, because UPSC has that particular trend even in CSAT. Now this particular trend, I think, I had recognized it in 2019. Prior, prior to that, I used to slog with mathematics and somehow manage in English and come off. But in 2019 onwards, I started seeing that trends. And all three years, 2019, 2020, 2021, I think, pretty safe enough that all eight of them were correct. Right. So. try maximizing this take last 10 years or 11 years papers and look at the topics and practice in and around of that particular topic that is a better strategy for c sir right any other questions <coughs> any other sir uh, generally most of us uh, br bring down the four options to uh, two of them but uh, how do we boil down to one option from there that is the most uh, critical part i guess see that particular question between two options one fundamental mistake what most of the aspirants do revision say suppose out of 100 you are attempting your paper in multiple rounds this is how i do in the first round say whatever i know 100% i'll attempt that would be roughly like 25 to 30 questions right next i'll eliminate two options i am left with 50 50 that will roughly like 42 45 then third round roughly i'll have i know only one option i which i can eliminate but other three options are remaining or unknown which is a set of 25 right now in this particular section trust me with good revision 20 of them can be got right right this is one funda revision is the key right the second funda is again elimination techniques and understanding the template understanding the template for example gandhi ji question i told you this unknown section i don't know who has written it but i found gandhi there i made him march there right dandi march gandhi ji so that understanding the template is important jugad method jugad jugad techniques right so one is revision the second one is this elimination technique i think more or less you will be able to get them right because out of this 45 you need to understand that you need to get only 30 of them right other 15 you can leave it because see first section anyway you going to get because you are 100% sure 30 of them right out of this 45 are getting 30 right right so you have attempted how many questions 75 out of 75 are getting 60 questions right if you get 30 or if you get even 25 that's a very good number like 55 out of 75 is a good number because out of these 25 now you have a leverage of 10 questions to be attempted say say three are correct or four are correct six are wrong something like that you will land up to a figure of 64 being correct or 60 being correct <coughs> any other thank you sir. any other doubts
i think if there are no doubts i think we'll end the session right i think regarding those deliverables and particulars of that 40 day course i think you will get those numbers the corresponding numbers that are to be contacted with right on the fees and whatever it is you will be clarified with okay achit guys thank you thank you sir